We are discussing the pros and cons of two cortisol sensor models and how they may be improved for future use. Cortisol sensors are a very popular idea for wearable devices to monitor the stress hormones in a person's body. These cortisol sensors use a process called electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. EIS allows cortisol levels to be determined based on the amount of impedance between the two electrodes due to the antigen cortisol. Impedance must be measured between each layer of the device to determine how much impedance is caused by the device itself without the antigen. Then, different levels of antigen may be added to determine how much impedance each amount of antigen causes. The following is the zinc oxide model with NPG replacing the zinc oxide in its design. First, start with two electrodes next to each other. Then, coat one electrode with NPG. Next, attach the interleukin-6 antibodies to the NPG coating. Interleukin-6 is used instead of cortisol, but is significantly related to levels of cortisol in the body. Add a porous polyamide layer over the device, which acts as a molecule size selection barrier. Room temperature ionic liquid, or RTIL, was used inside the pores to stabilize the antibodies for a longer period of time. Lastly, add the interleukin-6 antigen at different levels over a period of time to test the impedance levels. The current zinc oxide version has a detection limit of one nanogram per milliliter, with interleukin-6 being used because it is consistent inside and outside of the body. It also has been continuously tested for a 10 hour duration. The device only had a dynamic range from 10 to 200 nanograms per milliliter, although it had high accuracy. Cortisol and glucose antigens were also added and occasionally picked up by the interleukin-6 antibodies, but the low SST ratio showed the effect was not significant. The second model was made with molybdenum disulfide, but the new design would replace that component with NPG. First, two electrodes are placed vertically. The porous polyamide layer is added in between to act as a size barrier. Although this design did not test the RTIL, I suggest including it in the future to stabilize the antibodies. Next, the NPG would be added inside the polyamide layer as nanosheets. Then, cortisol antibodies would be attached to the NPG nanosheets. Lastly, add the cortisol antigen at different levels over a period of time to test the impedance levels. The current molybdenum disulfide version also has a detection limit of one nanogram per milliliter, but it also has a higher dynamic range from one to 500 nanograms per milliliter. A bending cycle test was performed on this device and showed low change in impedance. This would be useful to include in a wearable device, but this device has only been tested for a three plus hour duration with high accuracy. RTILs would be useful in either design as they both use antibodies and using RTILs would help keep them stable for much longer. NPG would be useful to use as it has more surface area, therefore allowing more antibodies to be attached. This could increase the detection limit of the device and possibly the time duration for continuous monitoring.